Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode of our Dungeon Boss Hero Rune Guide. Today we're going to be taking a look at Shade and what uh, sort of makes him tick, what's going to be our best options for runes, and uh, just cover a couple of the basics in terms of uh, how you use Shade and why, and why we choose the runes that we do. So, before the combat revamp uh, took place, Shade was basically a one-shotting machine. There was a couple of thoughts that went around at that time that dictated the best possible rune loadout, and it was actually not all attack, it was not all defense, it was actually sort of a mixture. So depending on which runes you actually use, predominantly with the fourth stat on these runes, people would use either four attack and one defense, or three attack and two defense. The former being a little bit more attack based, the second being a little bit more uh, defensive based and allowing a little bit more survivability. The reason we didn't go all out attack was because most of his attacks were basically overkill and pouring extra uh, effort into that uh, extra attack was basically not needed. And so people said, well, let's throw a little bit of extra defense or damage reduction on him to help him survive a little bit. And it worked out really well. So some caveats to that. Um, obviously, if you run into someone that had really good defense, you did lose your one shot mechanic. And also because you didn't put a lot of defense into him, he still would be pretty easy to uh, kill in the long run. So unless you went a full defensive route, uh, similar to my Caster Master team, um, you're not going to have a shade that's extremely durable. He will still get killed quite a bit uh, in the grand scheme of things. Your goal will be to use him in such a fashion where he's not getting killed or he's getting killed at uh, opportune times. Keep in mind that Caster Master team that I devoted to um, a while back that was um, well before Solaris and now before Agnon as well so that team may not even fly anymore giving Shade a whole bunch of defense is just asking for Agnon to kill him uh, very very quickly so there are a couple of uh, still uh, a lot of different options in terms of how you want to uh, rune out Shade I do still subscribe to heavy attack based Shade uh, partially because that's what his uh, character model plays into so when we look at his epic, his epic favors attack and his epic favors health. Nowhere on the sheet does it say defense. So while some people may want to go back to the caster master um, notion and go with a heavily defensive shade, I would probably advise against that. Number one is first and foremost because of Agnon. Even if you buff up uh, his defense to, uh, I think I had mine at about 6,000 or so when I was using that team, Agnon's going to eat that up and one-shot him, almost guaranteed. Unless you're using some sort of other proc where you can Spirit Link in the first round to protect against Agnon, you're likely going to have problems there. So better off to play into the strengths of him, which are going to be towards the attack and the max health. So keeping in mind how these things factor in, when we look at the stats, take a look at how the calculations take place. So it's always going to be the base, and then it's going to be all those runes added up. Then it's going to take your star bonus. So in this case here, 1400 plus all those extra runes, and then the star bonus. After all that is done, then the epic kicks in. So you get a 63% bonus, pause, and then you get another 30% bonus after that. So after you added all your runes, you're basically getting those things counted again. So when we have the option to increase both attack and health, it seems downright foolish to waste any of these spots on defense because the best defense you're going to get is, let's say, um, we add in another 800 defense per. So that's going to give us base defense of 1,000 plus 800 times 5 is 4,000. You're going to get 5,000 defense plus another 60% of that. You're going to maybe get... 7,000 defense out of it, is that really going to be beneficial uh, to sacrifice all that attack to do so? You're better off trying to pound up the health a little bit instead to give him a little bit more balance. So health is pretty easy to raise with shade and so is attack. So leave the defense for the defensive heroes. Use people like Solaris to revive him and then you won't have to worry so much about the defense. Use um, Spirit Link to your advantage as well. So the different... Um, methodologies. Now my my runes on shade are not optimal so I'm going to just address that right from the start. Some of these you're going to look at and be like why do you have that rune on there? Most of that is because I have not updated shade's rune since the combat revamp. So keep that in mind. I've not given him a really solid evaluation and say do I really need to change this? He's been uh, effective for me ever since. I've not had an issue with um, anything with him where it said you know what I really need to strip all these runes off. 
I'm putting my better ones on there. So any better runes that I've gotten over the last few months, I've just put those on other people who needed runes. Same thing with like the elite runes that I've gotten. I do have a couple of those. I put those on Grognog or on Koros or um, Lily or Ferno, somebody who could actually benefit from them. So the runes that I have right now is I'm still operating on a 4-1 scheme where I got a little bit of defense. It might actually be a 3-2 at this point, but looking at the stats, 10,000 attack, that's nothing really to scoff at, at least uh, at level 70 maxed out, fully ascended, and um, epic um, level 12. So for lower levels, yeah, sure, 10,000 attack is obviously very high, but with the way the calculations take place, I think you can comfortably get towards about maybe 13 or 14,000. I haven't done all the math on it, but uh, I think with those excellent uh, PvP runes out there that are double attack, I think you can get up in the uh, at least 13,000 range. <clears throat> Without knowing the exact damage calculations, I don't see really any benefit of doing that because we wouldn't be able to see how that uh, impacts various uh, defensive levels. So right now, when you use Shade, um, the big thing is you want to make sure he's live long enough to basically do what he needs to do. So in order to make sure he's alive long enough to do what he needs to do, that's when you need to think about uh, keeping him alive, which is uh, usually going to be health related. But also when you spirit link in the second round, uh, that's going to be a big one for keeping him alive, as well as uh, when you do your... Um, What's that called? When he possesses, that's going to be another thing that keeps him alive. So as long as you're not going against a Solaris team that is going to um, purge that spirit link or provide a feather and prevent uh, um, possession in the first place, um, that's the only thing you really have to worry about. And then at that point, uh, you could probably use your own Solaris to revive him and uh, take care of things. So my current runes um, are a little bit more defensive, usually on the fourth stat. So even this one here, you can get a maximum of about 900 attack for the best of runes. Because this is a power rune, it falls less than what those excellent PvP runes are. Whereas this one here is only uh, about 850 attack versus 900. So the other ones will usually be over 600 and over 300 for the two attack stats. So I did uh, reduce damage from fire. Predom uh, predominantly because of at the time Koros was doing a lot of damage and um, so this was a little bit of protection against Koros one-shotting him back in the um, pre-combat revamp we have attack attack health damage penetration versus rogue um, I don't remember why I picked rogue out of all things but uh, I did one extra damage against rogue might have been for um, Kira at the time before Kira was nerfed because you couldn't crit against him so you needed extra um, damage against him. So my first um, defensive one, and I actually went the opposite route here. So I have defense, defense, and reduction, but then the fourth stat is opposite of that. So it adds extra damage towards tanks. Anytime you can double up on those different uh, traits and have an offensive rune with a defensive stat, or a defensive rune with an offensive stat, it makes for a much more balanced uh, rune, in my opinion. Then we have attack, attack, health again, more damage penetration. Again, this had to have been for Kira, extra 30% damage against Kira, which is kind of a joke now. So obviously I could re reevaluate my runes on shade and make him a little bit more optimal. And then the last one was, um, again, it's a attack based rune, but it's a defensive um, fourth stat. And so, like I said, that can be really helpful in creating balance, but um, you can see that I have four attack runes and four, uh, one, uh, defensive rune. That's still a very good model to use. Uh, there's certainly nothing stopping you from doing all five attacks. Um, if you want a suggestion for all five attack base runes, um, definitely use some of the uh, PvP runes like a duelist. Um, do attack, attack, health if you have it. I think that's the best possible rune you could put on him. Um, take a look at what the force stat is to make him uh, optimal. Now, looking at uh, other variations of runes, you can go with more defensive, like I said, unless you want to be pigeonholed into um, certain other heroes like Astrid or Dagram that are going to help keep him alive uh, defensively. I think you're really limiting yourself there. So I, I would steer clear of full defensive builds unless the situation absolutely warranted where you're rocking a 20 plus streak and you know that by going all defense against a team, you're guaranteed to win. At that point, spend a few million gold to unequip and, and go for it. But I think there's likely um, much better options. 
So when you look at the runes, if you don't have those really great PvP runes, just want to point one thing out here. Dark runes probably have one of the best possible um, variations of runes that you can buy because they have um, battle runes, bulwark, and power runes, and destruction runes. They don't have the Aegis rune uh, for reduction, but that's okay. Um, but more importantly, they have a vampiric rune. <laughs> vampiric is nice because the values are fixed. It's always going to do uh, basically health, skill, and um, I believe attack on there as well. I have to look to see if I have a, a vampiric rune around here. Should have at least one. There's a greater vampiric. So it's always attack, health, and skill. So skill's going to raise a number of things for shade. It's obviously not the most critical, but it always has attack and it always has health. So if you wanted to boost those two things, a couple of vampirics are really nice to have on there because they will also give you some lifesteal as well. So while also you're not going to raise your health or your attack as much as you would like if you had the double attack rune um, still gives you a good variety so having two of these runes on would be um, a pretty good start if you're looking for you know some place to um, you know balance out a little bit so i would try to commit to a couple of those um, champion runes like defense defense attack again there's double stats here where it's defense and attack or if you have a uh, what's the other one? Like a duelist, where it's going to be attack, attack, health. This is probably the single best uh, rune you could put on Shade. If you have five uh, greater duelist runes, I think this is probably the single best option for you. Um, I would have to look around and see. I know I do have a bunch of duelists, but getting the attack, attack, and the health, it's going to keep him alive very long, and it's going to let him do his um, one-shot mechanic uh, pretty much all day. So, that being said, to recap uh, runes on Shade, um, you can contribute all of your runes towards attack if you want. Like I said, you can get that up to easily over 10,000 when you're at level 70. But uh, until we know the exact attack mechanics and what the formulas are, we don't know if it's necessary to have only 9,000, for example, to take care of the best. Obviously, Shade's still not one-shotting. Uh, Grognog on a full beast team. That's just not happening. That may not even happen with 15,000 attacks. So don't uh, make that your benchmark. So make it as, uh, you know, I guess um, as balanced as you can while still focusing on what he does best, which is attacking. So using this as a, a baseline, I think your double attacks and health are going to provide the best option because you're going to get a ton of extra health plus the epic on there, extra 20%, and the attack is going to go up as well. You can easily have probably 15,000 health and 10,000 attack, which is going to make him extremely uh, durable, even with only 2,000 defense. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or if you have some other theories that I overlooked as far as how or why you would ruin shade, uh, definitely leave those in the comments. Otherwise, like I said, I think this is going to be a good start for a lot of people. Um, if you have any other suggestions, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, we will see you again next time. Thanks. Thank you so much for watching this video and supporting my channel. If you like this video, please show your continued support by hitting that like button. And be sure to check out both my YouTube channels for new content all the time. And always remember, peace is a lie. There's only passion. We'll see you next time.